praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Well, uh, Pastor Raymond Dow, I uh, just want your listeners to know that the Lord spoke with me ever since I arrived from Trinidad about four days ago. The Lord has been speaking with me and He's spoken with me on three major occasions about uh, a fresh healing anointing that is coming to bring revival to the nation of Angola. Tremendous, very mighty, fresh anointing that's bringing revival to uh, the nation of Angola. Well, uh, we have seen that this year it's gotten quite busy. The Lord has on his itinerary and agenda many nations to visit. And so I would like to encourage Angola that, well, your time has come. The Lord is speaking about your nation. He is speaking about your blessed nation. He is speaking about the tremendous work He is coming to do in your midst to help you prepare for the coming of the Messiah. I want to mention, however, that this year has been quite busy, as I've already said, that uh, began with uh, the meeting in uh, the, the conference in Italy, and then after that the Lord navigated this ministry, his servant, to Helsinki in Finland, and after Helsinki, Finland, the Lord uh, then navigated his servant all the way to Brazil. And from Brazil, then the Spirit of the Lord navigated his servant to Zambia. And from Zambia, then to Trinidad and Tobago, where we have just come from. And you, you can almost see the trail of the Lord as the year kicks on. As we enter the mid-year, you can see the trail of the Lord. And it's been quite intensive, absolutely very, very intensive. Uh, there has not been much time in the agenda, in the, in, the, in the calendar. The agenda in the calendar, there has not been much time. Sometimes between nations. And uh, you can see that even the meeting we just came from in Trinidad, the Lord is doing big things. He walks into the meeting himself and he touches the tumors. People feel the hand of God himself touch the tumor and remove it in a very massive, massive act that can only constitute the tremendous signs and wonders of this age and of this time. And that is a God who has come out totally now and openly to be able to, to get to his people, to make them understand clearly the time, understand the event that is at stake now, and to really reach them all the way so that they may be able to make it on that day. Much has been said about the coming of the Messiah. I have preached it across the globe. But this year now, as we continue with this announcement, as I continue in this process with the Lord, now he has also incorporated the healing services in every country because of time. It seems there is not much time again to come to one nation and then after the conference and then come back next year now to another one day conference and the healing service. It looks like there is no much time now and that's why the Lord has decided to to, to do to, to, to do both the conferences and the healing services. So it tends to be quite heavy also in that way because then uh, the, the, the full program for the nation becomes quite heavy. But uh, I would like to encourage the nations uh, that are still ahead of us here, and very soon I'm sure the senior bishop will be able to read out the calendar 
of the nations in front here that have been slotted into the calendar for this year. Yes, I would like to encourage you, however, including Angola that the Lord has just spoken about, the tremendous fresh anointing that is coming to renew the church in Angola, revive the church, very mighty uh, anointing that is coming to bless the nation of Angola. But uh, I would like to encourage all the nations from Angola moving forward that you can almost look back now since this year began. You can look back at the conference in Italy, you can go through Helsinki and then move all the way to Brazil and come to Zambia and go to Trinidad and move towards Angola. You can almost see the trail now. You can see the trail, uh, how the, 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 the revival has shaped, how this wave of visitation to the nation has picked up. And I think that is where the information is for those who have not yet been visited as to how they should prepare for their meeting. The reason I'm saying this is because uh, it would be unfair. It would be unfair for me to to uh, to expect every nation to prepare the way Kenya prepares. So I really acknowledge and I understand that uh, most of the nations that are beginning to come aboard this revival, they are just beginning and they are beginning the baby steps. And so their chronological processes they have to go through in order to reach where Kenya is today. Even Kenya, we can see that it really took her. It has taken her up to 11 years now, if we begin from the year 2004. It has taken 11 years to be able now to to put together some serious organization of the revival meeting and the conferences and the healing services and to be able to host people and to, to be, become a platform where people can come and fetch the fire of the Lord. And that's why I'm saying for the nation that uh, the Lord is here to navigate me to you can almost see for yourself now from the trail of this year beginning again like i said from italy helsinki brazil zambia you can see how the lord is picking up but what i'm saying is that in that trail there is a very important message for you which i'm sure the archbishop will share with you very shortly but you can see that uh, that uh, there, there are certain minimums we need to put together for these revivals to have lasting impact, to have lasting uh, value in your country, so that the fire can keep burning at the altar of Jehovah, the God of Israel. Again, I'm saying so because sometimes when the meetings are so intensely populated within the calendar, and the quality of the meeting might go down because of the differences in the arrangements and organizational structures of the pastors in the different countries. And that's why the instruction of the Holy Spirit right now is that for those who are yet to be visited, you can see the trail of this year, and you can see how successful Helsinki was, and then you can almost tell what happened there, how the organization was put in place, for that revival to have begun. You, those, you can see how very successful Brazil was. And then you can also see how the organizational structure was placed, put in place for Brazil, all the way from Rio uh, up to Campo Grande, and, and, and how that revival has left a lasting impact. In fact, as a matter of fact, as we speak now, we are headed back to Brazil in October. So, so and then and you come to Zambia, you see the same thing. You see how mightily successful that ignition of the fire of the Lord at the altar was. And in fact, as, a, as we speak now, we are already mobilizing another calendar for Zambia. Uh, somewhere around probably because this year is too tight probably january already we're in zambia again for a second visit and so that's why i'm saying that for 
of Angola and the nations to come. Now you can see for yourselves that uh, the, 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 those that have held this very successful uh, visitation, there are certain hallmarks that uh, the Archbishop, I'm sure, will share with you as he engages with the respective pastors in different countries. You will see very clearly that the, in the organization structure, for example, when you invite the man of God to your country, you invite him because you want him to come to help you that now the Lord his God may bring the revival you see in Kenya into your country. So that, that's a very important place to begin. And if that be the case, then, uh, then it's important to see what the other countries have done where it's been very successful. When he comes to the land, make sure that you all fully submit to him. When you look at all the places, Helsinki, Brazil, Zambia, where a very, very successful ignition of the fire has taken place, you see that the pastors, the first thing they did is that when the men of God arrives the land, they submit the entire church to him and say, this is the church. And so when he is received in that way, then you know that he as the prophet of the Lord, will simply bring heaven to your country. And so, let it not be any case of anybody maintaining their old status quo when the man of God comes to your country. And I think this is important for Angola. I'm just saying this, that uh, you may be in the league of those who have lit up the fire continually burning at the altar of their church. And uh, the other thing is about the worship. All the way from Helsinki, again, you can see. You can see very clearly that the worship team are very holy dressed. Very holy. You can see that the worship team were very holy dressed. And the long gowns, uh, uh, all the way, uh, even Zambia that was not prepared. But when the message was spoken, and then you could see that at the service, they really changed uh, Everybody was well, wholly dressed. And so, I know that the senior archbishop again will communicate respectively with each one of you, but you begin to understand that now the worship are also very important in this uh, visitation because they, 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 they will always stand there. They will stand and worship the Lord right before the Lord there. And so, it's very important that they dress well. And number two is also, number three rather, it's also important that uh, there, there be no arrogance between the worship and the man of God. Because the man of God, he will rebuke sin. Yes, that he has done and that is his calling. He will rebuke the sin because he loves you. He will rebuke the sin and tell you, no, don't worship like that. Don't wear those short dresses showing your legs and stand at the altar of my God and begin to say you are worshipping. But when that has been said, so the worship, make sure the worship team understand that that is the love of God to fallen man. In fact, the absence of that is the absence of love. So, in those nations like Angola where we are heading to, when the worship is rebuked, make sure they, the worship has to always be the friend of the prophet. Remember that the worship team has always to be the friend in all the meetings, even Kenya, you can tell. The worship team is always close to the man of God when he walks to the altar. In fact, he turns to them and uh, they worship the Lord together. He can ask them to worship a particular song as the Spirit of the Lord leads him there at the altar. That everybody knows today. So you don't want to be a case where the worship team will uh, be fighting some supremacy battles on their own and then they, they will essentially miss out on the visitation of the Lord. And I think that is the biggest treasure of all treasures that every nation should never miss wherever his poverty is sent. And so I'm just giving this as an example of what happened in Trinidad. Well, now they block the major visitation. You see, the Lord walked in himself and did that. But there was more. 
there was more the Lord wanted to do in the land. There is always more. And it depends really on the disposition of your heart. Of course, I know there is a whole scenario about the church in Trinidad, the pastors, the Lord has continued to speak to me about the other pastors. He called them the gang pastors who are in the underworld and doing very dirty stuff. That's a whole engagement, a different engagement with the church. But I'm talking about the visitation. If you look at the trail of this year, beginning all the way from Helsinki coming down, coming to Brazil and Zambia, you can see where it has been very successful, lit up. The fire is burning. The calendars are lit up again. The visitation, the second, the third, are being planned. Keep the fire burning at the altar of the Lord. To keep the revival in flames. And so you want to make sure that the worship team in your country, those moving forward from here, Angola onward, the worship team must always be the friends of the men of God. Because they are at the healing service also, the men of God can ask them, for, as the Spirit of the Lord leads, ask them for a worship song. It is not anything to show anything for. Because the authority is at the altar there. When the man of God comes there, the authority is right there. So there's always no question about the authority. So the next thing that uh, I would like the nations uh, that, that are yet to be visited, or that aspire at least to have a visitation, to know is that, uh, again, the pastors, the host pastors, if you look at the trail of this year, the countries that have been visited successfully, you see that there's host pastors. None of them, no one of them ever, when the man of God has come to your land, no one has ever gone and stood at the altar and said, the Lord told me, the Lord, me also, the Lord recently told me and sent me to where, you know, so... so because otherwise the Lord will say, if I am already speaking with you, then what is my servant doing here? Because he has many other nations that want to listen to him. Then why is he here if you claim that you are the prophet also? So it will be kind of a contestation. And unto the Lord it will appear as though the false prophets in the land are trying to get the man of God to approve of them. And that will never happen in this lifetime and in the coming life. And so those are some of the tragedies that took place in uh, Trinidad when, uh, you know, the host pastor said, when the Lord spoke with me, and then right there and then you could see that the Spirit of the Lord grieved. And so, so as much as he wanted to do more things, but you could see that uh, there's no way then... Uh, that light and darkness can be mixed together. And so, if Angola is going to, 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 to capture this visitation, this fresh anointing, healing anointing, the Lord has shown me, tremendous fresh, I've never seen so much, fresh healing anointing that is coming to Angola, then these are going to be some of the key things the senior archbishop has to engage with you people on. And these things must be observed because uh, Jehovah is right now in a very busy schedule to revive the church locally and to righteousness, to bring them back unto holiness. In that way, it will be cost-effective and time-effective when the Lord sends His servant to your country. And so, and then the other thing also is that uh, for those that are here to be visited, when the man of God comes to your country and is set at the altar, the authority is right there. The authority of the Lord is right at the altar there. That is the final authority. And so sometimes the Spirit of the Lord can lead him to say something. He can say, for example, uh, the next session of conference, can we meet at 5 p.m. instead of 6? You cannot stand up as a host pastor and say, No! Uh, don't come at five. Uh, don't come uh, the way you're told. You cannot do so. If you do so again, you see, you grieve the Spirit of the Lord. Because you don't know why the Spirit of the Lord is speaking the way He is speaking. And so there are many things, very important things that uh, have come out which are very important 
which now the ministry in Kenya here that have been privileged to enjoy this revival this long has a responsibility. They have that responsibility now. They need to engage the other churches where the Lord is sending his servant and share with them. Share with them. Tell them, well, uh, when he comes, do this. If you want the revival we have, for, us, for example, in Kenya, before he came, there were so many voices, many prophets, false ones. But when he came, we forgot about all those voices and we saw the greatest revival in the history of the earth. So we don't need to be a genius on that one. That is very simple. When they listened to the fake voices, they were languishing in sin and no revival. But when they listened finally to the voice of the Lord, the voice of righteousness and holiness, they saw the biggest revival in the entire history of Bible. So, so that is a very simple choice. And so the, as the Lord navigates from Angola moving forward to DR Congo and many other nations as we move on, it is going to be important for those nations not yet visited to continue to look at the trail of this year and learn something, learn a thing or two about how the other people put it together. And the Kenyan church, the Archbishop's office here, is absolutely and should be absolutely available for consultation on how to put together the meeting. Again, I have seen the tremendous visitation of the Lord coming to Angola. May those who have ears realize that this is indeed the zero countdown to the coming of the Messiah. Angola, may the Lord bless you. Shalom.